I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and I'm delighted today to talk to Lee Kirby about wheelchair training skills, so about wheelchair skills. So Lee, um, before we get into wheelchair skills, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Just tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Sure, uh, as you said, my name is Lee Kirby. I work in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is uh, the, one of the more Eastern most provinces of Canada and uh, I've grown up here and aside from a bit of training in the United States and England uh, I've really had my whole career has been here in Halifax I work at Dalhousie University and it's a university affiliated hospital that I'm sat in which is the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center uh, we have uh, inpatients outpatients and all, all of that type of thing um, although I've been working in the uh, a more developed type of country, uh, Canada. We have a big interest in less resource parts of the world and have been focusing a lot of our development of our the wheelchair skills program on uh, items that would be relevant to people anywhere in the world that doesn't, don't require anything other than, than a person with a wheelchair and, and an interest in learning how to use it better. So you mentioned the wheelchair skills program that you've developed, um, but we will have plenty, I'm sure we'll talk about that and we will have time to talk about more about that later. But what I would like, to, so there's a couple of things that I think we need to start with. And one would be, what are wheelchair skills? And the other would be, why are they important? Sure. Well, wheelchair skills are really anything that you might do in your wheelchair. And obviously there's a, wide range of those uh, and too many to be included to, to include all of the more extreme things like some of the sports and so forth so the, the team that i work with uh, we gradually uh, selected a, a set of representative skills uh, that uh, people are able to do those they're able to get around in their community that the skills range from those as uh, as basic as rolling a few meters uh, across a smooth level surface to at the more difficult end of the spectrum coming down and we're going up uh, stairs. So now that, that makes my question about why are they important seem a bit silly because everybody needs to move around in their wheelchair. Um, but, um, but it is important that we teach these skills and, and so why is that and, and what is important about that? And, and maybe I will back up to finish your previous question. You may think it's self-evident uh, that uh, wheelchair skills are important for mobility, but uh, in, in fact, there, over the last number of years, there's been more and more papers published, uh, some by us, but uh, most by others, showing the relationship between one's ability to do wheelchair skills and to participate in society and fulfill people's roles in society. So return to work, for instance, or reducing caregiver burden, reducing the likelihood of, of uh, requiring extra um, support in a nursing home facility, for instance. So that uh, it's, it's not just skills for the sake of skills, but it's for mobility, but also to participate more widely in your life. Yeah, so really important then um, about uh, we, we need the to teach or to have the wheelchair skills for societal integration, like you say, participating in society, being involved in your community. It's, it's really important to remember this, isn't it, for, um, for someone with a physical disability that's using a wheelchair to be able to give them the skills and the functions to be able to um, be involved in the community and, and sport and society as they'd like to. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, the, some uh, have assumed that really the people will, will pick up how to use their chairs if you only just provide them with the right chair that that uh, things will work out and, and sometimes they do uh, many of the the very experienced uh, wheelchair users and athletes have learned on their own or learned from from peers and others uh, there's nothing wrong with that approach but it just doesn't ensure that everyone who might benefit from training uh, has the opportunity to, to receive it and more, more and more research is confirming that that just standard care is not doing the job. A more formalized approach, such as the wheelchair skills program, seems to produce better uh, results. So, 
as a healthcare professional, um, if I am working with a new wheelchair user, new, a person that's new to using a wheelchair, how would I, I mean, obviously you have your wheelchair skills program, but what should be my approach be with, in collaboration with my um, clients, patients, what should my approach be to helping them learn the wheelchair skills that they need for um, uh, integrating into the, or, you know, into the community or sport or whatever that it is that they would like to do. Yeah, thank you. Um, the World Health Organization in 2008 uh, uh, published uh, their guidelines on the provision of wheelchairs. It was, the title does say in less resource settings, but in fact, everyone around the world is, and who works in a variety of settings has endorsed these as uh, confirming the impression that people had anyway that, that a more formal approach rather than a commodity approach of just going to the local pharmacy or healthcare uh, provision store and picking out a chair or, or having it donated to you from a well-meaning uh, family member or well-meaning non-governmental organization, um, that the WHO process includes an eight-step process for providing wheelchairs, the service delivery model that they've developed. Well, not that they've developed, that they've recognized and, and codified in many ways. Uh, and there are, are connections to that, uh, that those guidelines are present in, in our section of this course, but I, I see also that other sections are using their materials as well and highly recommend those. But uh, those steps are, 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 wouldn't be a surprise to anyone working in a healthcare facility. They're the initial referral, they're the assessment, uh, they're th taking measurements so that people get the chairs that are appropriate to their, their impairments, uh, the preparation of the product, helping someone find the funding or, or otherwise being able to access the chair. Once the chair is received, setting it up and, and uh, fitting it to the person, checking them again to see if it works well with them in it, and then training in how to use it and take care of it. And that's the final step of the eight steps is a maintenance, repair, and follow-up. Um, so th those are all the, it's the continuum from the, the first identification of someone as a potential beneficiary of, of a wheelchair provision uh, right through to the long-range follow-up. So of those eight steps, two of them are highly relevant to the wheelchair skills area. The assessment, uh, obviously you can't assess someone's wheelchair skills until they have one to sit in, but as soon as they do, then watching them move around in the wheelchair, how they use it, uh, is a big help in modifying the fit and making sure everything's correct before you move into the more formal stage of the training. Uh, but then once the training begins, it should be deal with as many of those skills that uh, one can it depended on what their impairments are. So we wouldn't have the same level of expectation of someone who had a spinal cord injury at the, uh, the neck level as we would for someone who had that same injury down at the thoracic level. We wouldn't, we would have a different set of expectations for someone who has paraplegia from someone who's had a stroke or Parkinsonism or is a foot propeller. So, all of those things going to deciding which of the skills are feasible and trainable and then beginning setting goals that are that the, the client buys into and that you, you think might be achievable and then you work away at those until you reach a plateau and, and either then make changes in the chair or you just agree that we've gone as far as we can now, but you arrange that follow up to either by questionnaire or by watching them do the skills again to see whether they've maintained the skills you've taught before, whether their condition has evolved further. Some conditions are progressive, as you know, some and others there's a recovery. So the periodic reassessment uh, at least once a year would be appropriate. And some part of that assessment ought to be, how are you functioning in your chair? What can you do now that you couldn't do before? What can't you do now that you could do before? And using that to set a new set of goals if, if appropriate for a further set of uh, training sessions. So to teach people the skills, so you have developed the wheelchair skills training program, um, wheelchair skills program. Um, would you like to, could you tell us a little bit about that? And, and also I'm just wondering, is this program for healthcare professionals or can it be used as well by the uh, wheelchair user? Um, or is it a collaboration? Um, 
Mm -hmm. You know, who uses it and how? Yes, <clears throat> and we certainly uh, always acknowledge that we didn't invent wheelchair skills. They've been around as long as there have been wheelchairs, and there are many excellent manuals and textbooks uh, that, that are available, that, and we've just read everything we could. But much of what we learn, we, we learn either from the scientific literature, I guess we try and use the best available evidence, either in how to assess the skills or how to train people, um, but also from the users themselves and their, their caregivers. They tell us, they come in and show us how to do something we had never even considered before, and we look at that and we sort of may add it or we, we may not. And so it's a continuously evolving uh, set of protocols. Um, the, as the program itself began in 1996, so we're just about 22 years old and uh, we're just about to release version five of the wheelchair skills program manual. Uh, that will be on online for the, the course when it begins. There are many videotapes on our website and forms that can be used. And anything on our website is, is free. Our only conditions of use are really don't sell it for profit. If you're going to use our materials, uh, and acknowledge their source, uh, these sorts of things. But otherwise, it's really open season. If you want to take it and modify it and so forth, please do. And many, many groups have, have uh, translated uh, the, the, uh, the program uh, to their own languages. And how, how do you use the program that you have? Is it a, um, do you go through a series of um, sessions or courses that follow on from each other? Or can you pick, sure. go in and out of it to use the skills, to learn the skills that you need to learn, or as a healthcare professional, to learn how to teach the skills that you need to teach? How do, how do we use it? Well, we, from the standpoint of um, the activities of our wheelchair research team are that we try and identify questions that, that uh, seem important and that we might be able to answer. We put together teams of researchers, uh, both locally and internationally uh, and across uh, Canada and the US uh, to try and answer some of those questions. So we have an academic component to it that helps us keep it fresh and evolving. But in terms of its uh, the knowledge translation, getting the word out of about uh, the importance of these skills and how to assess and train them. We do that in the form of uh, pre-conference workshops, for instance. We, we uh, did one just recently in Dublin at the European Seating Symposium. We're doing one in Copenhagen next month uh, as part of the Nordic Seating Symposium. We're doing a, another full day course at the American Congress of Rehabilitation Medicine. So we do a few of these a year and we also travel to various places in the world if people have some sponsorship. Well, in the rehabilitation center here in Halifax, uh, the way we use it is that as soon as someone's identified as a potential wheelchair user, we, we have chairs here that uh, we can put them in on a trial basis. And so we use, have, use trial chairs to see whether they uh, have, seem to be benefiting from them. And that's part of the assessment uh, that I mentioned to you earlier. And uh, as soon as we've determined that it would be appropriate, we get on with the training. Their own chair may not be exactly the same as the one we put them in, the hospital chair, but uh, we have a range of hospital chairs, so we try and match them as well as we can, but we get on with the training. Uh, and then by the time someone's discharged, we do a final assessment after the inpatient sessions. This, we've had them start at this level and they've ended up at this level and we want to document that for the health record and show that the benefits of, uh, of the, the program. But also so we have, you no know, that's that may be the end of the, the formal inpatient rehabilitation, but it's also the beginning of their, the rest of their life. And so we'll have a baseline for that when we bring them back at three months or a year and, and so forth. So, which is a really good point to make, isn't it? That, you know, when you when you start out with teaching the wheelchair skills, that's just starting with the baseline and that you're going to be working with people for the rest of their lives. And so it's important to take that baseline and then, as you say, um, reassess every annually or however often it needs to be to uh, help people um, learn more, develop, um, become more functional and learn more skills to enable them to do the new things they want to do because everybody has new goals every year and that's that's exact that would be the same for uh, an, indi an individual using a wheelchair so um, that baseline is important and then the continual assessment is important as well 
And, and that leads to another comment, I, if, if I may. I, I was just giving you an example of someone who's had a recent loss of function, uh, such as a spinal cord injury, an amputation stroke, and so forth. Um, but there's a, there are many people that we see uh, in the outpatient clinics uh, for the first time who've been using wheelchairs for many years and have never been through a formal training program. And they also benefit by assessing how they're doing things and many other things they'd be doing very well. But there'll be other specific skills that they might require a little bit of, uh, of uh, refresher course. I guess it's not a refresher if they've never had it in the beginning, but, but uh, some goals can be identified, uh, even for people who've been been users for many years. Yeah, it's a very good point to make, isn't it? Um, so it sounds like in talking to you, um, you know, wheelchair skills are obviously they're key to function, aren't they? They're key to function for a start, and and they and that function is key to um, wheelchair users being able to achieve their goals and integrate into their community as they would wish to do. Um, so they, they are a key component and, and they are one of, a part of the uh, eight steps that for wheelchair service provision. So um, really important and I think um, really nice that you have been able to bring them all together in a program for people to use. So healthcare professionals can look at your program and use your program to work with the individuals that the people that they're working with. Um, so it's really nice to hear you talk about wheelchair skills and the program that you've developed. Is there any other knowledge about wheelchair skills in particular that we haven't covered that you think might be useful to the healthcare professional that might be watching this video? Um, no, I think in summary, we've, we've touched on, on things from the thousand foot level, really that the, the benefits are down at the level of detail. So we encourage people to uh, engage in the course uh, and the materials that are there. We've tried to summarize uh, the training tips in a relatively brief manner. Uh, but for those who are interested in, in more detail, we have some links to, to our website and, and to the Wheelchair Skills Program Manual where things are dealt with in a bit more detail. So um, again, look at the videos, look at the manual, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Our contact information is, uh, is on the front of the manual cover, and we welcome that. That's great. Uh, thank you for the invite for people to contact you. I have a feeling you might be inundated, but um, before you go, to just can you tell us whereabouts we can find the Wheelchair Skills Program online? Yes, it's uh, just, you, if you just Google Wheelchair Skills and it'll pop up, uh, it's at, at Dalhousie University, but the website is www.wheelchairskillsprogram, all one word, dot CA, CA for Canada. Yeah. Lee, thank you so much. It's been really good to talk to you about this today. Um, uh, your work is amazing, um, very valuable to everybody, and we encourage everyone to have a good look at it. Um, uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity.